Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn about circular motion using the tangential description of motion. We'll cover position and displacement, tangential velocity, and tangential acceleration. Then we'll summarize the main points at the end. Circular motion is when an object travels along a circular path. By comparison, Rotational motion is when an object itself is rotating about its own center, but it's not translating. We're going to focus on circular motion in this video. This car is one example of circular motion because it traces out a path in the shape of a circle. Another example is a tether ball attached to a pole. As the ball swings around, it follows a circular path. There's thousands of satellites orbiting the Earth, and the Earth itself is orbiting the Sun. Technically, most orbits follow an ellipse, but we're mostly going to work with circular orbits. Even if an object doesn't complete a full circle, it's still in circular motion if the shape of its path is a circle. It turns out that the tangential description of circular motion is similar to linear motion. So, for comparison, let's do a quick review of linear motion. This car is driving along a straight road. With linear motion, we describe the position of the car along one axis, a straight line, relative to a zero point. Here, the car's position is 10 meters, and here, the car's position is 50 meters. Displacement is the change in position, or the final position minus the initial position. This car's displacement would be 40 meters, or 0 0.04 kilometers, and the odometer in the car tells us how far the car drove. Velocity is the displacement divided by time. If this car drove 40 meters in 4 seconds, then 40 divided by 4 would be 10 meters per second, or 36 kilometers per hour. The speedometer, or speed gauge, in the car would show us the speed of the car in the direction that it's moving. Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. If this car starts from rest and then its velocity increases over time, that's acceleration. So in linear motion, the position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration of an object are all described along a straight line, the x direction. We normally use the variable x to describe horizontal linear motion, and y to describe vertical linear motion. The equations for horizontal motion use x, and the equations for vertical motion use y. But the variables and equations mean the same thing for both directions. We're just choosing to describe the motion in a way that's useful, based on how an object is moving. Now let's take a look at how the same things apply to circular motion. Let's start with position and displacement. For this video, we'll use a car driving around a circular track as our example for circular motion. How can we describe the position of the car as it moves? One way is to place markers, like flags, at equal distances along the road. Let's put a flag every 10 meters. But how are we measuring these distances? Is the 50 meter flag placed at a straight line distance of 50 meters from the starting flag? Not exactly. 50 meters is describing the length of the curved line between the two flags, the line that follows the path of the car, which is the circumference of a circle. A section of a circumference is called an arc, and the length of that arc is called the arc length. So, the length of this arc is 50 meters. If we took that arc and straightened it out, as if it were a string, its straight length would still be 50 meters. We could also imagine taking a big tape measure and wrapping it around the road. That would tell us where to place each of these flags. So, what would be the length of the entire road? The road is a circle, and the circumference of a circle, c, is pi times the diameter or 2 times pi times the radius. If the diameter d is 48 meters, then the circumference is 150.8 meters. That's the total length of the path around the circular road. 
Instead of using flags, let's use this curved circular axis. This is how we're going to measure position in circular motion. This looks similar to the axis for a linear motion, but instead it's wrapped around in a circle. And instead of using the variable x for a linear position, we're going to use the variable s for circular position. And just like with linear position, the SI unit for circular position is meters. So that's position. What about displacement? Just like with linear motion, the displacement of an object in circular motion is the change in position, delta s, which is equal to the final position minus the initial position. The SI unit for displacement is also meters. As an example, if this car started at an initial position of 30 meters, and move to a final position of 90 meters, then the car's displacement would be 90 minus 30, or 60 meters. And remember, this displacement is not a straight line between the initial and final points. This is the circular displacement of the car around the circular path. It's also the length of this arc, which is why we sometimes also refer to delta s as arc length. Like with linear motion, the odometer in the car would show us our displacement along the circular road. The odometer doesn't know whether we're driving on a straight road or a curved road. It just measures the distance the car travels along whatever path it takes. Even though this track is only 150.8 meters long, what happens to the position and displacement if the car keeps driving around? The numbers don't reset back to zero. They keep going up. We can also visualize things by graphing the circular position of the car over time. After one revolution around this track, the position keeps increasing. It's like the car is driving on an infinite straight road. But what if the car drives in the other direction? Like with linear motion, we always define a positive and negative direction when we set up an axis. For circular motion, Counterclockwise, or anticlockwise, is considered the positive direction, and clockwise is considered the negative direction. There may be situations where that's not the case, but if we're not told which direction is positive, we're going to assume it's counterclockwise. As an example, if we graph the position of this car, we can see the car moves to positive 20 meters, reverses direction, and moves to negative 20 meters. The object can move as far as it wants in the positive or negative direction, and we measure its position relative to the initial zero point that we established. So that's how we describe position and displacement for circular motion. Now let's talk about tangential velocity. Like linear velocity, tangential velocity is the circular displacement of an object divided by a period of time. We still use the variable v for velocity and we use the subscript t to mean tangential, which we'll explain soon. The SI unit for tangential velocity is meters per second, the same as linear velocity. As an example, if this car drove 80 meters around the track in 10 seconds, then the car's tangential velocity was 80 meters divided by 10 seconds, which is 8 meters per second, or about 29 kilometers per hour the speed gauge in the car would display the car's tangential velocity. Remember, the gauge doesn't know the car is driving in a circle. It just measures the velocity of the car along whatever path it's following. Now, let's talk about the difference between tangential speed and velocity. Remember that speed is a scalar. It only includes the magnitude of the velocity, and it's always a positive number. But velocity is a vector. It includes both a magnitude and a direction, and it can be positive or negative. If a car's speed is 30 km per hour, the velocity needs a direction. For circular motion, that can only be 30 km per hour counterclockwise or clockwise. Or instead, we could say positive or negative 30 km per hour, based on our axis, where the positive and negative tell us the direction. So what does that look like? If this car is driving in a circle with a constant speed of 30 km per hour, we could say that the velocity of the car is 30 km per hour clockwise. 
but we're usually going to set up a circular axis to describe the motion, and we're going to establish the positive and negative directions up front. Conventionally, clockwise is the negative direction, so based on this axis, the velocity of the car would be negative 30 kilometers per hour. If the car was driving counterclockwise, then we would say the velocity is positive 30 kilometers per hour. When talking about direction, there's another thing we need to cover. Why do we call this the tangential velocity? It comes from geometry. For any point on a curved line or a circle, a tangent line is a line that passes through that point and matches the slope or the curvature of the line at that point. For a point on a circle, the tangent line will only touch the circle at that one point. If we draw a line from that point to the center of the circle, the tangent line will be perpendicular to this radius line. And as this point moves around the circle, the tangent line rotates and it always remains tangent to the circle. So, as this car drives around in a circle, the direction the car is pointing always falls onto a line that is tangent to the circular path. So we call this the tangential velocity. You might also hear this referred to as the linear velocity of an object in circular motion, because we're describing the object's velocity along this tangent line at a given instant. From the car's point of view, its motion is being described as if the circular path was straightened out into a line. So while it's fair to say that the direction of the car's velocity is counterclockwise while it's moving, we can also describe the direction of the velocity at a single moment in time. This is what we call the instantaneous velocity, and it refers to the direction of the velocity vector, this arrow, at an instant in time. Let's use a compass to help us describe it. If we pause time when the car is here, what direction is the car moving? At this moment, the car is moving upwards, which is north. So the car's velocity, at this instant, is 30 kilometers per hour north. If we pause time when the car is here, the car is moving to the left. So the velocity of the car at this time is 30 kilometers per hour west. Here, the car's velocity is 30 kilometers per hour south. And here, it's 30 kilometers per hour east. The direction of the instantaneous velocity is not important when we're using the equations for circular motion from this video. It's enough to describe the velocity as counterclockwise or clockwise, which is positive or negative. But the direction of the instantaneous velocity is a concept you'll be expected to know. The last thing to cover is tangential acceleration. Like linear acceleration, Tangential acceleration is the change in the tangential velocity divided by a period of time. And we represent tangential acceleration as a sub t, a for acceleration, and t for tangential. The SI unit is meters per second squared, the same as for linear acceleration. If this car starts with a tangential velocity of zero kilometers per hour, and then it speeds up over time, then the car is experiencing tangential acceleration. It's important to remember that the term acceleration means a change in velocity, not necessarily an increase in velocity. If a car has a velocity of 100 km per hour and it slows down, that's also considered acceleration because it's a change in velocity. In that example, the acceleration would be negative, but it's still considered acceleration just like velocity can be positive or negative. Let's try calculating tangential acceleration. This car starts with zero velocity and then accelerates around the circle. Over 10 seconds, the car's velocity changes from zero meters per second to eight meters per second, about 29 kilometers per hour. The tangential acceleration would be the change in velocity, eight minus zero meters per second, over the period of time, 10 seconds. That gives us 8 meters per second divided by 10 seconds, which equals 0 0.8 meters per second per second. Remember the unit meters per second per second is the same as meters per second squared. 
If someone says their car can do 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4 seconds, or maybe 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 4 seconds, they're describing the acceleration of their car. If the car is traveling in circular motion, then it would be the tangential acceleration of the car, which is the change in tangential velocity divided by a period of time. This tangential acceleration of a car driving around a circular track is not that different from a car on a straight road. The tangential acceleration is just the acceleration along the path that it's following. Finally, let's look at the two other kinematic equations for an object with a constant acceleration. These should look familiar. The first equation tells us that for an object in circular motion with a constant acceleration, the final position is equal to the initial position plus the initial tangential velocity times time plus one half times the tangential acceleration multiplied by the time squared. This is useful for things like finding the position of an object in circular motion after it accelerates for a given period of time. The second equation tells us that for an object accelerating in circular motion, the final tangential velocity squared is equal to the initial tangential velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the displacement, or the final minus the initial positions. That one can help us find things like the tangential velocity of an object in circular motion after accelerating over a given displacement. These should look familiar because they're the same kinematic equations from linear motion. All we're doing is changing the variables to represent the circular direction instead of the linear direction. For position, we're using s for circular motion and x for linear motion. Displacement is the final position minus the initial position. Velocity is the change in position over time. Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. The first kinematic equation is the same for both. And so is the second equation. Again, all we're changing is the variables to represent one motion or the other. But the equations work the same way. So that's everything we're going to cover. What should we be expected to know from this video? This lesson focused on objects in circular motion and how to use the tangential description of motion. These are the variables we learned and their SI units. Here are the equations we covered. The first three are what we would call the definitions of tangential displacement, velocity, and acceleration. The last two are the kinematic equations that we can use for an object with a constant acceleration. When we describe the position of an object in circular motion, it's like we're taking a linear axis and wrapping it around in a circle. Counterclockwise is the positive direction, and clockwise is the negative direction. And remember, the position will continue to increase or decrease as the object travels around more than one revolution. Tangential speed is a scalar, and only includes magnitude, and tangential velocity is a vector, which includes magnitude and direction. We call this motion tangential motion because the direction of the object's velocity is always tangent to the circular path at any instant in time. And just like with linear motion, the tangential acceleration is just the change in tangential velocity over time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.